Good morning. Today we're going to be working on this Nissan Leaf. Customer states uh, it has a bad 12 volt battery, so it pretty should be a pretty simple job here. We've got to just pop out this battery. Should be easy peasy, quick job. And uh, let's just take a look inside, see how things are going here from a, a mileage perspective. Okay, it's arrived. The Ohm Mu, not sure if that's how it's pronounced, the Ohm Mu battery. This is going to be for a 2014 Nissan Leaf. Very excited to unbox it, measure it, weigh it, see how it compares to the original one. Okay, cool. Got a warranty. Four years, 48 months. That's great. Thought it would have been longer to be honest, but that's okay. Okay, good to know. Some adapters. Oh, nice. Wow, look at that. Now let's take some measurements. I want to see how heavy it is and the size. We'll compare it to our Nissan Leaf battery. Yeah. 11 pounds, pretty much on the button. Very good. Okay, in the vehicle, let's uh, press the start button here. Eleven bars? My goodness, that's one healthy battery. Most customers come to me when they're down to six, or I've even seen five bars remaining. Um, so it's not often I get to see such a healthy battery. And wow, 35,000 miles and only one bar lost? That is amazing. Cool. So first step is I'm going to disconnect the negative terminal just in case if I start here on the post, there's a chance that I could short something out. So instead, we'll start on this negative here. All right, let's do it. Ten millimeter ratchet. All right. got the new Omu right here side by side you can see it's actually a bit smaller and oh my gosh is it lighter I can't express enough I can't wait to get this guy on the scale and show you but wow what a difference this is gonna be great now we can see that the terminal sizes are not quite the same here so it came with some adapters here which I'll go ahead and put on now to uh, make sure the terminals are the same size before we go in. Okay, here's our little terminal adapter, so we'll put that one on there. Put that one on there. Slides on. All right, slides on real nice. This one's loose, this one is tight, so I assume from this crack in here, when we tighten it down, it'll clamp on. But that looks a whole lot better, doesn't it? All right, let's get the sucker in. Okay, let's see if we can get this in with one hand while filming. There we go. Oh, yeah. Very nice. 
So it does slide around a little, so hopefully when we get this uh, bracket back on, it'll lock everything down. Cool, and now the hardest part of this whole thing will just be trying to get this sucker lined up. Okay, so that side. Okay, start ratcheting this guy back down here. All right. Back to this guy in here. Give it the old shake. And then it shakes the whole car, and we can say, oh, that ain't going nowhere. And we know we're successful. All right, great. I'm gonna throw on the uh, positive here. Tighten that down. Ooh, before I throw this guy back on there, probably should clean this out. Following the battery change, everything looks normal here on the instrument cluster. Up above, there's a warning indicator, and I'll admit when I don't know something, this concerned me, so I pointed it out to the customer, and they said, oh, that's normal until you start the car. What does this indicator mean? Please put something in the comments below. Okay, so let's check out this bad mamma jamma. This sucker is full of lead, and it is heavy. Oh my goodness. Let's put it on there, see what, see what, see what we got. Okay, that is pretty uh, epically heavy compared to the other one. You have to see it for yourself. Ta -da! And then some quick measurements of the dimension. Take some quick size measurements. Seems like the only difference is the width. Nine and a quarter inches for the old battery, seven and three quarter inches for the new. The height, and depth are the same. Let's talk about the 12 volt battery in electric vehicles. Let's take this Fiat 500E that I'm working on right now. It has a brand new lead acid battery. It's uh, got a three year warranty on it. It's estimated to last about 200 full charge and discharge cycles. Now, a typical lead acid battery only has around 30 to 50% of its stated amp hours. So this has a 50 amp hour life to it and can charge and discharge 200 times. Now a comparable lithium ion battery is only needs to be 20 amp hours to achieve the same performance and the reason for that is that you can fully charge and fully discharge a lithium ion battery. Furthermore the OMU that I just installed in that leaf can be charged and discharged up to 2,000 times. So that's 10 times as many charge cycles. So I left the customer with this thought, and that is that, that the reason we paid a premium for that OMU, and I recommended it, is it's probably going to last, honestly, 10 years, whereas this will only last 3 to 5 years, which is why it has a 3 to 5 year warranty. The drawback of a lithium ion battery is that it doesn't charge well under freezing temperatures. In fact, it probably doesn't accept the charge at all, which is why you have a battery heater to keep the battery temperature above a certain value so that it can accept the charge. These 12 volt batteries don't have their own separate battery heater, so if you replace it with a lithium ion battery, be careful on cold days because it might not be getting charged back up. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button. And more importantly, please subscribe. That's how we make more videos. Until next time, this is Austin EV only.